Hi everyone, Keith here. Hey, I wanted to talk to you tonight about these uh, quasi contracts and how it works. Because evidently people aren't getting it real real quick. Um, every time you sign a contract, you're, you're performing commerce. Under the United States Code, it's been clearly clarified that um, all crimes are commercial. And so every time you end up going into court and you try to fight these things based on a quote contract and you want to know where you contracted, uh, gave consent in this and that. Um, a lot of people are misunderstanding that it's not the current contract that you need to worry about so much. It's your prior contracts that you've already committed to that allow them to say that, okay, well, this person is acting as administrator of this estate and he's given us permission to do this stuff. And the first contract I want you to think about is your marriage license. Every 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 couple that gets married in, through a uh, state marriage license has already contracted with the state. And in that contract, through your, your medical insurance, if you're on uh, medical, um, your food stamp program, if you're on food stamp, FIP, if you're on FIP, any kind of welfare, child support, stuff like that. Those are all quasi-contracts that have you involved. And they're moving your state money around. They're using that social security number to, to open up securities to, to trade on the market. And they're claiming you're a third party contractee to those securities. And that's where you need to get them. And, and I think the best way to do this is you have to understand that there are prerequisites, requirements, that they have to maintain in order to be able to have somebody in a seat as a CEO, chairman, chief executive officer, president. There are certain prerequisites, as in the president of the United States has to be elected. There has to be so many elections. There has to be so many votes. There has to be so many electoral counts, whatever. There are prerequisites that say that he can't be president unless he's a quote, citizen. Now, once he becomes a citizen and he's taken upon that seat, he has to govern according to that seat. And what people don't understand is that in order to be able to, um, quote, control that straw man account, there are prerequisites such as taking an oath of citizenship, doing your DBA, um, authenticating the birth certificate, and things like that, that if you don't have all of that stuff done, then you don't hold the capacity to have the correct status to sit in that seat. You, you don't have that. And that's where they fail too. They don't have it either. They don't have proof that you've taken an oath, that you've done your DBA, that you've done your uh, uh, assumed name thing, that you've authenticated your birth certificate. They don't have... A, a direct clarification notice from the Department of State to the Secretary of State stating that you are acting in the capacity of or on or for the estate as an agent, agent thereof, of the principal of the estate. Because the principal is still always going to be the estate. Principal, remember, is a financial term. Always the principal will be the estate. So when you have to uh, um, do these court things, understand that they have to have the proper delegation of authority. They have to show not only their authority for jurisdiction, but the authority that they maintain in their presumption that you have jurisdiction and authority over the estate. If you haven't done things properly and maintained all the requirements, then you cannot possibly hold that seat. And that's your, that's your prima facie evidence against these fraudsters. Understand that. Start pointing that stuff out. You have to, you have to understand that is not your estate. It is an estate drawn up by the state. They are the creators of it. Therefore, it, even though they say it, they are not owners and you are the only one that can step up into that position, that position still doesn't mean that you own it. You cannot control it. You can only control that which you create. If you did not create it, you cannot control it. And those that think they're in control 
re have to remember that if you've already done the DBA and the uh, assumed name and all that, uh, authenticated the birth certificate and taken your oath and declared your documents, um, you have to understand that you still contracted through that that uh, uh, DBA that all the contracts you do are going to be quasi-contracts. Understand, you're doing business with a fictitious, uh, fictitious, uh, a fictitious corporation uh, known as the United States that has so many octop octopi arm of their uh, corporate entity that you can't avoid it. It's in the uh, transportation department. It's in the public uh, school system. It's in the banking system. It's in the legal system. It's in the realty system. It's in the insurance and bond system. It's in every system that you can think of, including the entertainment system, the news system, the uh, printing business. You name it. The only way to maintain your privacy is to swear to your privacy, your whole privacy, and nothing but your privacy. Hope you guys understand that. Every time you get involved in these contracts, you're you're putting your, all of your information out into the public through uh, quasi contracts, and you, and you already know that you go and uh, you change insurance from this company to this company. This company gets mad at you, put your name out on a on a list, and all of a sudden you've got you've already acquired your new insurance, but all of a sudden now you've got 25 million calls for people that want your business for new insurance. That's how it works. They're fraudsters, every last one of them. Correct your status right here. That's all I got for you, folks. God bless. Love you. That's all I got. Have a great night.